Let's let's talk about some helpful certifications. You mentioned SPRAT. Can you tell us the difference between SPRAT and IRATA and is one better than the other? Um, you know, I, I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say one is better than the other. It just depends, you know, where what your goals are, um, you know, who you want to work for, all that kind of stuff, you know, because like, you know, like I mentioned, there's kind of everybody's got their own little specialty, you know, um, the guys over at Rigged International Group in Vegas, they're an Irata company. And that's just because, you know, they deal with a lot of um, clients in the oil and gas world up in Alaska. And, you know, their clients basically require that of them. Uh, for me, um, I'm operating under Sprout right now. Um, it's a lot easier to operate under, so to say, for the company. Um, mm -hmm. And Sprout's more for the technicians, whereas Irata, it's more for a, a company and it gives you um, a lot of structure on how to run your organization as a whole. Um, so, mm -hmm. you know, it's just playing by, you know, it's a pretty rigid system with Irata. Um, I do like it. Um, I have my Irata 3 cert um, and it's something, you know, I tend to probably keep. Um, not something I'll go without. Uh, just because, you know, for the most part, you know, the, those certs like that between Sprout and Irata, um, you know, that's what it's my livelihood is. But the difference, you know, it's it all at the end of it, um, you know, the certifications all kind of come out to the same as far as like skill levels go. You know, by the end of it, mm -hmm. you're going to learn all the same things under the Sprout scheme or Irata scheme. Uh, if, a company, a of... if a company is saying that they need a Sprout technician or if they say they need an IRATA technician, but you have the other certification, what's your experience been in either hiring people or working with employers who have the opposite certification? Do they allow, you know, people, does an IRATA company allow people with a SPRAT certification? Um, they do if you have an IRATA certification with it. Um, so if okay, you so you have company, to, yeah, <laughs> you so you have, have to have, have whatever the company's asking for. Right, and so Sprat, they, you know, they say um, in uh, in some of their documentation, you know, they recognize IRATA. So if you're if there's a Sprat company like mine, and I see somebody with an IRATA three, hey, that's as good as a Sprat three to me. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it makes it like I said, it's just, the the biggest difference for me it, between Sprat and IRATA is just how you operate you know you just mm -hmm. got less people to report to with sprat so to say but as far as technician goes i mean you know something doesn't have hurt to have all of them uh right mm -hmm. now there's not very many erotic companies in north america right now um it's not a real common thing you find a lot of them down in the gulf um mm -hmm. and you find them up in alaska um but yeah. as far as like everybody else you know like the big stadium gigs and all that kind of stuff um you know these one-off projects we're working on that's just we do just have viewers technology. we do have viewers in europe that are currently tuning in um, which is super awesome. So is IRATA more common in Europe, in those countries? Um, yeah, definitely. That's where I started. I got my level one in Barcelona. Um, and, wow. you know, it's only all IRATA. Um, Weird so, flex, you know, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's when I was touring with Corteo. And, and uh, oh, yeah. it was kind of cool. Sense. And so that's how I got into it was there was two really good level threes on the crew. And, you know, I showed up to Corteo. Pro like, I was well in over my head. Like, I didn't have the skill set to really be there. Um, so mouth shot ears open. And I just chased those guys for, you know, have a log and just learn everything I could from them. And it's kind of like, you know, seeing your favorite big league ball player for the first time. You're like, man, I want to be like that guy. Yeah. Um, and so yeah. anyway, as a, as a group, I remember one week we, uh, the entire rigging crew, we went and did our level ones. And uh, I remember I came down with pneumonia that week and I ended, ended up having to go back because I couldn't finish the class because I was so sick. Uh, turns out oh, Barcelona nice. was a really fun place, you know? Um, so, yeah. Um, so yeah, that was kind of the start for me, but then, you know, I came back to North America and really, you know, in my, in the 10 years that I've been in rope access, I think I've only worked for one erotic company. And so, huh. um, it's just not common. Um, Sprat, it's not going to get you everywhere, uh, but most places, um, in North America for sure. Um, you know, there's... I think there's opportunity with IRATA if you get mixed in with the right company. Um, I don't know who's doing it right now, uh, but I think that, you know, there is opportunity to travel abroad, um, mm -hmm. you know. So right. we have a question. Oh, yeah. I wanted to see how much of the screen this was going to take up. Lars says, I got my IRATA cert a, fr a few years ago, but let it expire because it really didn't open many doors for me and and my career went in another direction. Due to COVID, that path may end. I'm looking to get back into rope access. Do you have any advice in getting work? Do you just email or call businesses? Currently a theater technician with some electrical and rigging experience, and he's located in the Netherlands. 
Um, good question. Great question. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, rope access is different in Europe uh, than it is in the States, just the way companies are structured and the way they hire their people. Um, it's a lot more, seems to be freelance based in the UK. But, you know, the what, what I thought with um, coming out of entertainment, you know, entertainment rigging is basically industrial rigging just shrunk down, um, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, um, so you got to kind of look at that stuff like chain hoist, uh, you know, those are chain hoist or some sort of winch in almost every wind turbine. Um, you know, if you're in automation, um, automation is something that can take you all over the place. It depends what you're willing to get into. Um, some of it's kind of dirty work, but for me, you know, I don't necessarily mind it. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, I would say, you know, identify the points that you're strongest at in the theater, um, you know, whether it be, I don't know, working on electrics. That's a great way to get into rope access, I think, especially in the UK. But I don't want to talk too much to that because I don't really know. But, um, yeah, yeah. you know, if you can hang on ropes and you can deal with electrics, I got a feeling you'll be able to make some money. That seems to yeah, be uh, yeah. seems to be a pretty good skill set. I know in Canada, one of my buddies from Porteo, he's uh, going through an electrical apprentice and he's got his level three. So there's something to it.